So the title of the show is The Future is Always Now. And a lot of the work in the exhibition plays with people's perception of uh, time, really. So the intention for me is to take uh, objects that are part of people's everyday lives and cause them to appear as if they have been uncovered on some future archaeological site, right? Um, and this confusion of time is something that's very much present in all of the work uh, in this show. This work began, uh, I was on Easter Island a number of years ago working on a series of paintings and there was, uh, you know, these Moai statues that are from a thousand years ago and just next to that is a dump where they put all of the things that are left by people who visit the island. And I was there watching this kind of archaeological excavation of this thousand year old statue next to a site which is new things that could become part of this uh, future archaeology. And I imagined somebody finding both of these things in the future, where you have something that's from now and something from a thousand years ago, almost being in the same time, right? So there's this confusion between uh, things of age. All of the work in this show is developed or has developed over the last couple of years with a lot of experimentation and a lot of failure. The works are made to appear as if they have been buried for a long time, uh, but it's not a trompe l'oeil effect. It's not something that you know is a surface. Uh, these objects are actually made out of the materials that they could become, right? So the, the compact disc sign is volcanic ash and. Uh, the guitar here is it's volcanic ash and obsidian, almost as if these objects had been transformed into these geological materials. And the use of the, uh, these specific materials is very much about uh, allowing the audience to not look at something and think, okay, this is a painting of what this thing could be, or it's a surface thing. It's actually transformed uh, into these uh, materials, which recall geological time. Two years ago now, I did a small project with Pharrell Williams that was based on a keyboard very much like the one here. And this was a, an object that was present for him at the beginning of his career, but he, that he didn't use anymore. Uh, and I recreated it to look as if it had been, you know, aged and it was made out of volcanic ash. And so I decided to make a full exhibition, all centering around this idea of music and specifically the objects of music. Ten years ago now, uh, I was approached by a choreographer named Merce Cunningham uh, to work on a stage design for him. And this is something that I had never thought I would do, and it's not something that I was ever uh, trained in. I didn't study stage design. And uh, Merce had a very particular way of working where he would make his choreography uh, an artist would make the set, and a musician would make the score, but none of them knew what the other one was doing. I worked with Merce uh, up until his death in 2009, and there was a dancer named Jonah Beaucaire in Merce's company that began to make his own choreography following uh, Merce's death. And with Jonah, it's much more about it, making something that the dancers can directly interact with. Allowing the objects to uh, inform the choreography. And so we make work uh, that exists in a stage context in theaters. And I've always found it uh, interesting that these audiences from the theater and the audience that would come to a gallery or a museum, they don't always overlap. Ladies and gentlemen.